Hello everyone, it's Full Review Time and today we're going to be looking at Age of Fear, the Undead King. As I said in the first impressions, this game didn't really tickle my fancy and going through the game even more, it's just kind of resulted in the same. It is relaxing and there is a challenge to it, however, in my opinion, the game needs a hell of a lot more work in terms of the design. The mechanics themselves are solid. I'll go into more detail when we get into the game. So the game itself is simple and fun to play. All you really need to do and understand is that you have to buy troops, upgrade them, make them better, and they get experience from surviving other attacks. Now what you see here is a standard battle plan. So here, my arm is on the left, their arm is on the right, and they've got some other troops in the middle. You navigate through the map with a hex-based view where you can sh select where your troops need to go. Once your troops have moved to the relative spot, if they are within range, you can attack the other enemies. Now, when you attack an enemy, you have a percent chance on hit. Now, if you do not hit that percent chance, you will miss the target. And that's where the game starts to get a bit fuzzy because it can draw out a game and take it forever because the chance on hit on some enemies is like 10-20% and it's the same on you as well so I think some necessary tweaks are needed in that area itself and the overall look and feel of the game as well could potentially do with a bit of finessing I understand it looks very retro which is cool but in terms of the programming behind it when you're selecting your troops it seems slow and sluggish the more troops that you get on the AI is smart and the way that it works is very very good in terms of they know where to move they know priority target so it makes you reorganize your troops and protect your leader in this map for example it's edward who is one of the horsemen now as you progress through the stages it's pretty much the same thing over and over and over again in terms of the story it is a textual based story and that in its own right is good it's a bit of reading material however it might have been nice if the developer also introduced some potential voiceovers so you could listen to it rather than having to scan through quite a lot of text on some scenarios when you complete the mission you get a wall of text in which is the story and then after you get another wall of text let me get on to some of the features that this game has firstly there's multiplayer, there's two campaigns, there is an array of troops that you can choose in terms of the types of troops as well. There is an auto save feature as well as a save feature and loading. As you can see though, it's a bit buggy moving across the screen. You get it flashing up and down. So that's what I mean by it requires a bit more work in terms of finessing, finishing, getting rid of these tiny little bugs. But all the auto saves are good. It gets you to select where you want. And in terms of the actual story itself, it is okay, the lore is pretty good. But as you can see, this is the story. So it's all text based and there's a lot of text to read and you click continue and there's more text to read. So the average person will probably just end up skipping it. Now this is the troop selection screen. This is where you spend the time strategizing, figuring out what you need in terms of the attacks but what you don't know is what's coming ahead which is a bit tricky because you don't know what you want to buy now there's some potential op troops in this like the horsemen are pretty damn strong and they've got a good accuracy you have your monks and if you can line your monks up monks up behind your troops you can just constantly heal them so you can you can there's all sorts of different strategies that you can use the horsemen in the front bowmen in the back monks in the middle it kind of puts the enemies at a standstill until you get further into the game where the enemies have like these little suicide bombers that run at you but you can figure out how to take those out by uh, using different tactics because they have a aoe area of effect attack when they hit you they explode you can use bowmen to take them out before they get close to you if you let them scuttle up to each other as well so they have other troops around them it has a knock-on effect and you can pretty much wipe out an entire enemy force if you do it properly the other thing i wanted to talk about as well is the difficulty ratings now there are three difficulty ratings novice normal and veteran now the difference between these three difficulties to my eyes is it reduces your chance on hit now to me that's not necessarily an improved and more challenging game because if you reduce your chance on hit all you're doing is prolonging the attack and the fight now there is a way around it which is pretty cheap which is just to save before each attack if you don't hit them restart and then do it again 
Very clever. That's all you really need to do. So the difficulty levels are uh, pretty much they redundant. There's no requirements for them. They don't do anything. They don't make the game more challenging. They just make it Very more tiresome. Probably, probably, so yeah. maybe changing the difficulties to increase the amount of enemies Taste that you have to dumb. fight and you have to strategize more may be a better solution in terms of playing the Try game. It makes it more me. challenging rather than just you clicking and them clicking. That's, it's... Yeah, that's that's the only downside to that sort of logic and the difficulty ratings. In terms of the actual gameplay and the AI mechanics, they are For the excellent. Kingdom. The spot on. It just needs more Very finesse, clever. a bit of a graphical improvement, and a bit more management on the way that the threads are managed. Uh, especially when you're fighting big enemies, it can take quite a lot of time for those uh, troops to go through because they Russian do it one down. at a time in terms of their <laughs> movements. And the, the movements of your characters as well as well they're a bit sloppy they just they just move you can zoom in and out which is a good feature so you can see the full battle you can see the full battle or you can zoom right into your troops that you've got selected and the other thing which is pretty cool is Welcome. what you can see here is finding gold and chests. so if you click your enemies you can well, you click your troops Rather than attacking the enemy, you can see that there's other destructibles in the map, which is cool. And when you break through them, you can get items or gold, which help you enhance your troops as well. One of the main issues with this game is progression. Now, even if you play on Novice, if you screw up on one Glorious. fight, by that I mean you lose a lot of your troops, you don't really get a lot of gold. So what you have to do is you have to, re right. you have to save before every battle and then reload it just in Taste case you screw dagger. up because you'll need to come up with a better way of doing it so you don't lose a lot so of your glory. troops because if you lose a lot of your troops you won't be able to buy enough for the next fight which is going I to be hard so notice. that bit i liked that were a bit more challenging and a bit more involved trying Very to come up clever. with different ways to attack different armies different strategies Try but that's it guys me. i hope you enjoyed i do apologize to the developer but it needs more work